what our number one priority needs to be, and I think that is tackling the heroin, fentanyl, and opioid crisis in Pennsylvania, which continues uh, to claim lives. Uh, it will claim 12 Pennsylvanians today and sadly tomorrow as well. Uh, when I took office, that number stood at 15. Some progress is, is being made, though I won't be happy till that number is down to zero. Drug addiction is a disease, not a crime. And so if you begin the conversation understanding that, then I think you can have a more holistic, broad-based approach to resolving this epidemic. So, you know, in law enforcement, we look at the root causes or the supply chains, right? And so typically, the conversation started and ended with law enforcement on street corners, right? You go to street corners, you arrest dealers, and that's the way, uh, you know, historically law enforcement has dealt with um, a, a drug crisis. Now look, we've done our fair share of that. And now we don't arrest street level dealers, that's typically uh, the work of a district attorney. We're doing mid and high level dealers, and the number of arrests we've made of, of folks in the community averages out to five drug dealers a day every single day I've been in office. I mean, that's an enormous number of drug dealers. But if we stop there, we would not, I think, effectively deal with this crisis. If you really want to go at the supply chain, you got to go to doctor's offices. And you got to make sure that medical professionals who are doing what's called diverting or taking a legal prescription drug and diverting it for illegal use, that they are addressed. And so we have had um, 548 arrests for prescription fraud abuse, including a network that was operating here uh, in, in the Dauphin County area. That's a 61% increase in our diversion uh, arrests. I went to the legislature early on in my tenure and specifically asked them for funding for about a dozen diversion agents so we could focus on this. And I think the proof is right there that um, it has uh, it has worked. The name of the prescription fraud ring, which I can never actually pronounce, is the, the Purifoy uh, prescription fraud ring, which was operating in Dauphin, Cumberland, and Lebanon County. Um, they had uh, written 3,500 uh, or fake prescriptions leading to 3,500 oxycodone uh, pills. You also have to have the courage to go after the powerful pharmaceutical companies. Um, you see, we understand that this opioid crisis was literally manufactured by the opioid manufacturers like Purdue Pharmaceutical. They made specific decisions in their boardrooms to turn a blind eye to the addictive nature and to lie to physicians and others about their product. And as a result, we have this crisis today. Now, some people will say to me, I don't get why the actions of a pharmaceutical company lead to someone buying heroin on the streets of Harrisburg or fentanyl on the streets of Harrisburg. It's really simple. Um, an Oxycontin pill, which is uh, an opioid pill manufactured by Purdue, has nearly the exact same chemical makeup as heroin. People get hooked on these pills. And by the way, oftentimes, not because they did anything wrong, but they followed a doctor's advice or uh, a parent's advice or whatever the case may be. They get hooked. And then when you go and try and buy a pill illegally on the streets of Harrisburg, you're going to spend about 20 to 25 bucks for a pill um, like an Oxycontin or what have you. And it becomes cost prohibitive. And so you migrate to heroin. And heroin really is almost non-existent. It's almost exclusively fentanyl now or a mixture of, of both. Anybody have any idea how much it costs to buy a bag of heroin or fentanyl on the streets of Harrisburg? We just had a big bust in Wilkes-Barre, so not Harrisburg, but we're seeing similar numbers uh, across Pennsylvania. 77 cents. I think it's important for people to understand that migration, how cheap fentanyl and heroin is, and just how available it is. And, and this is what we're up against. It's one of the reasons why I've been leading um, a, the national investigation into the opioid manufacturers and distributors. We announced the framework of a global settlement of roughly $50 billion. I can get into more details later if you'd like on that. But we think that that is a critically important part of being able to slow these prescriptions out into the marketplace and the crisis that they've created to get some resources from them to help pay for things like treatment and, and other services.